Gamblers crowd the blackjack tables, and the scene of them placing their bets isn't unusual. But the fact that one man is there, and the reason why, is quite peculiar. On the verge of bankruptcy, Fred Smith bet FedEx's last available capital on a game of blackjack in Las Vegas. Just how close was the original overnight delivery company, a titan among UPS, Amazon, and the United States Postal Service, to going bankrupt? Fred Smith is the founder and CEO of FedEx. He grew up in a wealthy family in Memphis, Tennessee. He was stricken with Perthes disease, a disorder that causes arthritis in the hips of young children. He was forced to wear leg braces, but he was able to outgrow the disease at 10 years old. He'd go on to be a talented football and basketball player in school. Smith's dad passed away when he was only four years old. A wealthy man, Fred Smith Sr. made his money from the Smith Motor Coach Company, which Greyhound eventually bought in 1931. Seeking a new business venture, Smith's father bet on a 24-7 restaurant chain called Toddle House, specializing in breakfast. Smith Sr. became the president of Toddle House in 1932 and opened more than 200 restaurants in 90 cities before he passed away. Fred Smith Sr.'s legacy left his family with plenty of wealth and connections. Smith attended Yale University in 1962. That's where he put to paper an idea that would shape his life. At that time, Smith had no idea that his economics term paper about overnight package delivery would blossom into a company that would ship millions of packages daily. His professor didn't think FedEx would ever take off. He gave Smith a C for the paper, stating, quote, The concept is interesting and well-formed, but in order to earn better than a C, the idea must be feasible. Smith was the president of Delta Kappa Epsilon, the same fraternity that brought in President George W. Bush in 1964. Smith's political ties strengthened through his friendship with John Kerry, Bush's future presidential opponent. The two of them shared an appreciation for flying, and all three men were also members of Skull and Bones, a secret society operating out of Yale. After graduating with a bachelor's degree in economics, Smith joined the Marines and was stationed as a platoon leader in Vietnam. The young blue-collar men under his wing taught him about a side of America he hadn't experienced before. In an interview with Fortune magazine in 1998, Smith attributes FedEx's accomplishments to meeting the needs of blue-collar America. Smith returned home after two tours of duty in Vietnam. Determined to do something productive rather than, in his own words, quote, blow things up, Smith joined his stepfather at work. He was a retired Air Force general who ran an aircraft modification company in Little Rock. The company was struggling, though, as getting parts became increasingly difficult. However, the inconsistency in getting airplane parts, coupled with the planes at his disposal, brought Smith's original idea from his old economics paper in play. The idea was simple enough. Packages from all over the country flew to one central location, known as a hub. From the hub, they'd be sorted, loaded back onto planes, and sent off on specific routes, or spokes, to their final destination. The hub and spoke system operated at night, when air traffic was light, allowing packages to be delivered bright and early in the morning. Smith knew he had an A-plus idea, and he put a lot on the line. Even though he had invested the bulk of his inheritance of $4 million from his father, he was on a mission to secure even more capital to buy his first fleet of FedEx planes. Investors were impressed by his knowledge of the air freight industry, learned from his years in Vietnam. And by 1972, Smith amassed $91 million in loans and venture capital. That's well over half a billion dollars in 2021 dollars. The first FedEx fleet included 14 Falcon jets delivering to 25 cities. After a slow opening night, delivering only 186 packages, word of this brand new overnight delivery system quickly spread and FedEx took flight. However, for all its overnight successes, FedEx was plagued by the rising fuel costs of the 1970s because of the 1973 oil crisis. The Middle East, the world's primary source of oil, was locked in the Yom Kippur War, a conflict between Israel and Arab-controlled states like Egypt and Syria. The Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, known as OPEC, placed an oil embargo on countries that they believed supported Israel during the conflict. The embargo increased the price of oil by 300%, a 
among the hardest hit by the embargo was the US. Oil prices quadrupled. Fuel costs were putting FedEx on the verge of bankruptcy. The company was losing a million dollars per month and Smith was running out of investors. Nobody foresaw the future of FedEx, and investors simply refused to put more money into a company that was influenced so heavily on the price of oil. Smith was in a Chicago airport when he decided to take matters into his own hands. He had just gotten out of a meeting with investors, where they had said no after he asked for more funds. Instead of flying home to Memphis, Smith took an impulsive trip to Las Vegas. That's where he took the company's last $5,000 and put it all on a few hands of blackjack. Incredibly, by the end of the night, Smith turned that $5,000 into $27,000. He quit while he was ahead and deposited the money into a business account. That was the amount he needed to put FedEx afloat for a few more weeks. Roger Frock, the former senior vice president of operations at FedEx, recalls the moment he learned about Smith's big bet. He was left speechless after learning Smith had taken the company's last few dollars and gambled with it. Smith had a pretty simple answer. What difference does it make? To Smith, that 5000 was as good as nothing. They were in debt to the fuel companies and never would have gotten their planes off the ground if they didn't pay their bill. Of course, 27000 wasn't enough to get FedEx out of the red. But it bought him another few weeks where he could go hunt for more investors. Thankfully he hit on an $11 million loan. For almost 50 years, the story of Smith's blackjack winnings have been retold time and time again. Each telling, like any story, stretches the truth a little more each time. Smith himself finally went on record, recounting the story as he remembers it, but we'll get into that a little later. Still, an $11 million loan didn't mean much, it just bought them more time. FedEx had lost $13.4 million in their first two years, and investors were worried. Smith refused to go down without a fight, and he launched an aggressive ad campaign to generate more business. The slogan, FedEx, when it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight, hit the right nerve with consumers, especially around holiday times. FedEx finally turned its first profit, netting $3.6 million in 1976. However, the delicate state of the oil industry wasn't going away. In fact, a second oil crisis had been brewing through the mid-70s, before finally peaking again in 1979. Thankfully for FedEx, the company went public in 1978 with a successful IPO. By 1980, FedEx reported revenue of $415 million, with $38 million in profits. The Middle Eastern oil crisis eventually settled, and FedEx saw nothing but an open sky ahead. By 1999, FedEx was the number one overnight shipping service in the world. Today, FedEx has a market cap of $73 billion. As of 2020, FedEx employs over 650,000 people around the world, and they deliver billions of packages every year. With 680 planes in its fleet, FedEx is technically the world's largest airline. Of course, FedEx doesn't only exist in the sky. They command over 200,000 vehicles between 18-wheelers, delivery trucks, and vans. They've recently introduced a fleet of 500 electric vans, EV600, from Brightdrop, a new subsidiary of General Motors specializing in eco-friendly electric vehicles. So if you were to strap a GoPro onto a FedEx package, what would the journey look like? Let's begin in Los Angeles, California with something reasonable in size, let's say a deck of cards and some poker chips. We'll be sending this to our friend, Fred Smith, who's waiting at Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut for the sake of this example. Our journey begins at noon inside any FedEx shipping center or office in LA. There, the staff will pack the item and load it onto a truck where it's taken to the nearest sorting office. From there, the package heads off to LAX where it's loaded on a FedEx plane and flown through the night to one of six hubs across the United States. Most packages end up in Memphis, Tennessee, the largest FedEx hub in the country. Its central location makes the hub and spoke system work as intended, giving birth to the myth that all FedEx packages go through Memphis. The myth isn't true, of course, but most of the packages indeed do make it through Memphis. 
The Memphis Super Hub is equipped with lasers, scanners, slides, and 42 miles of conveyor belts that allow half a million packages to be sorted per hour. Our package arrives at 1 a.m. the next day. It's sorted and put on a plane headed east. Later that morning, it arrives at its final airport before being loaded onto an 18-wheeler and shipped to a local sorting office. Finally, Mr. Smith's package is delivered to his hotel room at Mohegan Sun sometime that afternoon. As we mentioned before, the story of Smith's $27,000 blackjack win has been exaggerated over the years. It wasn't until his son, Arthur Smith, appeared on a podcast, called his father, and asked him to retell the story. Arthur Smith is the head coach of the Atlanta Falcons and appeared on Bussin' with the Boys, a sports podcast under the umbrella of Barstool Sports. The story came up, and Arthur confirmed the story to be true. For concrete facts, he called his father, put him on speaker, and asked him to fact-check what's been published for the last 50 years. According to Fred Smith, he and his platoon played poker and blackjack in Vietnam, so he was very familiar with the optimal style of play for blackjack. He was hired by a man to fly into Las Vegas in 1974. That same man gave him a $5,000 line of credit to play blackjack. Smith actually won $35,000 that night, but he lost a bit and went back down to $27,000 before calling it a night. Technically, Smith didn't run off with the company's last $5,000 to gamble in Vegas, but that $27,000 indeed helped FedEx afloat for just a little more time. <laughs>